ะทุกท่านพร้อมแล้วนะคะก็จะขอเรียนเชิญทุกท่านเข้าสู่การนำเสนองานประชุมวิชาการอีกสักครั้งนะคะเป็นคีย์โน้ตเลคเชอร์นะคะท่านที่2ที่เราได้รับเกียรติในวันนี้นะคะท่านเป็นผู้ที่มีชื่อเสียงที่สุดทางด้านเซนติฟิวส์นะคะโปรเฟสเซอร์ชางอึ้งนะคะในที่นี้ขอเรียนเชิญดรทยานันบุญยรักษ์นะคะขึ้นมาแนะนําวิทยากรค่ะเรียนเชิญค่ะกูมอร์นิ่งเลดี้สินเจนท์เมนต์ So as a request by Professor Ng, uh, may I introduce you in Thai for benefit of audience? ขออนุญาตแนะนำอาจารย์เป็นภาษาไทยแล้วกันนะครับจะได้มีความคุ้นเคยกันมากมากมากกว่านี้นะครับก็อาจารย์อาจารย์อึ้งนะขอเรียกหรือว่าโปรเซสชาวก็ได้ก็เป็นเป็นท่านเป็น vice president ก็คือเป็นรองอธิการของมหาวิทยาลัยฮ่องกง University of Science and Technology ซึ่งเป็นมหาลัยที่ติดอันดับท็อป30ของโลกนะแล้วก็เป็นมหาลัยที่แอคทีฟขึ้นเร็วมากๆท่านเป็นมีเป็นได้รับเลือกเป็นเขาเรียกว่า OC Fellow ของ Cambridge แล้วก็ชางเจียงสกอร่าของประเทศจีนซึ่งตำแหน่งสองตำแหน่งเนี้ยเป็นตำแหน่งที่เรียกว่าพิเศษมากๆปีปีหนึ่งนี้อาจจะไม่ไม่ได้มีใครได้รับเลือกเป็นตำแหน่งนี้เลยก็ได้ก็คือเทียบเท่าคล้ายๆกับของประเทศไทยคือรางวัลชัยมุกตะพันนะครับนอกจากนี้ท่านก็ยังเป็นอิดิตเป็นแอสโซเชียตอิดิเตอร์คือเป็นรองบรรณาธิการของ Canadian Geotechnical Journal ซึ่งเป็นเป็นเรียกว่า Top 3 Journal เกี่ยวกับทางด้านวิศวกรรมปัตภีในโลกเลยแล้วท่านก็ถือว่าเป็นเป็นบอร์ดเมมเบอร์ของ ISS MGE ซึ่งซึ่งประเทศไทยเนี่ยก็เป็นสมาชิกนั้นอยู่ด้วยนอกจากนั้นท่านก็ยังได้ได้รับรางวัลค่อนข้างค่อนข้างเยอะนะรางวัลเช่นเปเปอร์ยอดเยี่ยมจากจากแคนาเดียนจิโอเทนิคอลเจอร์แนลติดกันสองปีซ้อนเลยบทความที่ท่านพรีเซนต์ทั้งหมดเนี่ยในท็อปเจอร์แนลทั้งหลายเนี่ยเช่นจิโอเทคนิคเอเอซีจิโอเทนิคอลเอนจิเนียริงแล้วก็แคนาเดียนจิโอเทนิคอลเจอร์แนลรวมทั้งซอยน์ฟาวเดชันเนี่ยมากกว่า230เปเปอร์นะครับซึ่งถ้านับกันแล้วก็คือผมว่านี่ก็เป็นอันดับต้นๆของโลกที่สามารถจะตีพิมพ์บทความได้ประมาณนี้นอกจากนี้ก็จะมีพวกบทความทางที่เป็นคอนเฟรนซ์ทั้งหลายเนี่ยประมาณ300เปเปอร์คือถ้าไปพรีเซนต์อย่างเดียวก็แทบจะไม่ต้องสอนนะก็คือใช้ใช้แบ่งเวลาให้ลูกศิษย์ไปพรีเซนต์ด้วยนอกจากนี้ท่านก็ยังแต่งหนังสือ2เรื่องเรื่องแรกคือ Soil and Structure Interaction เรื่องที่2ก็คือเป็น Advanced Unsaturated Soil Mechanics ซึ่งเป็นศาสตร์ค่อนข้างใหม่ในที่เรากำลังจะเริ่มเรียนเริ่มเรียนกันนะครับผู้นี้นอกจากนี้ก็ยังรับรางวัลต่างๆมากมายนะเช่นเป็นรางวัลเขาเรียกว่าเป็น Scholar ของประเทศจีนนะซึ่งต้องมีการแข่งขันค่อนข้างสูงมากแล้วก็ประวัติของท่านก็คือจริงๆก็มากถ้าเกิดจะอธิบายกันก็คงใช้เวลาไม่ต่ำกว่า10นาทีนะครับก็เพื่อไม่ให้เป็นการเสียเวลานะก็ขอเรียนเชิญขอให้ปรบมือโปรเซอร์อื่นนิดนึงครับคุณมอนิ่งเลดี้สินเจนท์เมนต์และขอบคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณของคุณ
uh, work, recent work on three-dimensional centrifuge and numerical modeling of multiple uh, tunnel interaction. Then uh, green slope engineering and the effects of particular function and the effects of root architecture and on uh, slope stability. And then um, a new environmentally friendly and normal three-layer cover system. Okay. And without the need of any ge uh, geomembrane or soils. Um, so this is the area map of Hong Kong. Um, if you go to Hong Kong, you will uh, land it here. And if you travel to the east about 40 minutes, then you reach our campus on the east coast here. And, and I can, oh, sorry, <laughs> okay. And so this is our campus, and very beautiful campus. And I've been to 36 countries around the world, and I think this is one of the most beautiful ones. Um, and our university was established in 1991, which we were, were young, only 25 years old. And we have 4,000 postgraduate students and 9,000 undergraduate students. Um, our university mainly uh, consists of three schools, engineering, science, and business. And engineering is the biggest. And I must say we are very lucky. Uh, in a sense, if you're international ranking time, higher education, engineering and technology, we, we are number 14 in the world. And if we consider the age under 50 years old, okay, under 50, we were number three in the world. And QS ranking that similar, 14 in the world, and not, if not considering age, but if you consider age under 50, we were number two in the world. And in terms of subject, and, and again, latest one, 2016, our civil and structural engineering department ran number 23 uh, in the world. So we are very lucky in the sense. Why we are so lucky? Because we got excellent students from Thailand, <laughs> okay, and this Ohm's work, doing his PhD, he published uh, five top journal papers. You can see from, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, you can see from, uh, uh, geotechnical letters, uh, geotechnical ge ge environmental engineering from ASCE, and uh, Canadian geotechnical journals, all top journals in the world, five during his PhD work. And also he has uh, many conference papers. He went to Czech Republic, Japan, and Australia, and the United Kingdom, and the USA. So he traveled many places <laughs> and during his PhD study. And so I would say really excellent student, as you can see. This effect goes without saying. And now, Vivian, also an excellent student. And again, you can see he published five top journal papers. Uh, they are all top journals in the world. And one conference paper, and also one patent. Okay, so again, I would say really thanks for the Thai people who sent their excellent students to uh, Hong Kong. And also, more than that, and recently we have two excellent uh, exchange students, uh, both ladies. And their nickname called Bo and, and uh, Oil, okay. And, uh, and under the supervisor of, uh, under supervision of our president here. And actually our president, uh, Sutisa, he, he worked very hard in our lab and uh, doing the centrifuge tests. And so I hope uh, we can have more students uh, uh, come to Hong Kong. And we provide uh, exchange scholarships uh, for students and we up to, uh, say, in the order of 1,200 uh, US dollars per month for exchange students, and also scholarship for full-time with the students, uh, 2,000 to 2,006 uh, US dollars per month. Okay, it depends on the type of scholarships. So if any students in the audience are interested to come to Hong Kong, you are most welcome to contact me on, or go to our website. So different subjects, even structures, is okay, no problem. Okay. So um, now let me move on. We have uh, our geotechnical century future. Understand type uh, uh, colleagues here are interested to build one in, in Thailand. And uh, this is, uh, I would say, uh, one of the most advanced one because we have a 2D shaking table. It means can model earthquake, first one in the world. Model earthquake in two directions, okay? And also we have a 4S robot. Means can go X, Y, Z and rotation when century is spinning. And that was, uh, this was established 2001, long time ago, and, but still it's under good condition. And later on, I'll show you an example. Okay. Now, before I show you an example, let's go to fundamental principle of geotensive modeling. It's a tool. Okay. 
And the principle is to we create stress condition uh, as those in the full scale, in the, in the field, so-called prototype, using a model greatly reduced scale. And how can it be achieved? And just subject to model component into enhanced body force by, uh, by what? By centripetal acceleration. And and R omega square equal to ng, my surname. Okay. And obviously, I do centrifuge, that's why. Um, so the mathematically prototype stress is rho gh, the p pin prototype. Then if we can increase g from g to ng, and the prototype scale can be reduced by n times, so cancel this out, get the same prototype stress as this one. Okay, so identical. The principle is very, very simple, okay? So that's why it's good for modern geotechnical problems, stress-dependent problems, such as consolidation, slope instability, tunnel length, effect pile, and so on. So if I may better illustrate this, say, for some, this is a very, very show versus mean effective stress. And then if a sample at A and B are the same density, so if low, a test at low stress, it dilates. But if it tests uh, high stress, then in the field, or in the centrifuge, then it's contract. So it's very important to get the stress right. So, we can, so in the centrifuge, we, we increase the stress, okay? Increase stress on this axis from here, to, from A to B in the centrifuge. Then similar in the field. Then when we test it, so it actually contract. So we can mimic the stress condition correctly in the centrifuge before, do, before we do any experiment. So must get the stress right before the experiment. Otherwise, your result may, may be wrong in the non-conservative sense. All right, so there's a lot of scaling laws, but I, I, I'm not supposed to go through with you in detail in the interest of time. But one thing I do want to highlight you is say, for example, in Bangkok, you have soft clay, then the time, time factor is n square. So in other words, if we do a single test for one day, 150G, that's the maximum capacity we can do. So actually, you could in 62 years. So you don't have to wait for 62 years to get your result. One, one day will do. OK, let me give you an example. This is a collapse of a building in Shanghai, 2009. And the client from Shanghai, the actually Shanghai government, want us to do century tests to investigate why this building collapsed. So this is a building collapsed already. And this are the building behind, not collapsing. No, it was not, uh, they were not collapsed. Um, but this is the one lying on the floor. This is a broken pile. So let me show you a video. And in, in the interest of time, I was, I was, okay, I will, now this is a, a model container um, we use. Um, now let me go back a little bit. Now let me stop here. It is very important. Now, those uh, open squares are the in-situ profile, and doing shear string versus depth here. So those are in-situ, and the black dots are the one actually we simulate in the centrifuge. We care about when the centrifuge is spinning, we put the cone, uh, we, we T-bar in to measure the shear strength in the centrifuge. You can see it's very consistent with two tests in the, in the centrifuge versus those few data. A few data obviously is very scattered, as you can imagine. That's why we will write the four between. And then we, and then we can start the experiment. So those are the, uh, this is the model pile, and this is a model building, okay. And this is a uh, foundation with similar very detail of the uh, construction. So those are the uh, uh, installation pile. There's a shear wall, the building look, looking from the top. So this is the mo uh, finished and, uh, container. Okay, so now this is the last stage of the test. Okay, so again, let me just pause it for the time being. Let me explain. So when the century is spinning, then on this side here, we simulate the surcharge loading by adding a, a hydraulic jack to increase the loading. On this side here, you, you just about to see actually doing the excavation simultaneously by drawing out the heavy liquid, similar the body weight of the soil. Okay, uh, this is the last stage of the test. Okay, let me just continue. Okay, and the client want to know the collapse was because of the surcharge on this side or due to the excavation or due to both. So this was the objective of the test. So now you can see the building start to move and move and the collapse eventually. Okay. Okay, now, 
let's see the comparison. So this is the, this is the from the central test, and this is in the field. I hope you agree, they look very alike, <laughs> okay? And then after that, and then of course, we can also take the model into pieces to investigate what's going on. So we, we can, we can take the model, okay, and study where it broke, and compare with those in the field, and you can see the, the uh, scar of the, those uh, broken piles. So we can, we can do a very detailed investigation by carry out this type of central test. Altogether, we carry out three, and then help the client to decide whether the cause of the collapse was because of the surcharge, or because of the excavation, or because of both. And obviously, you can imagine people blame each other, say, who causing the collapse? Okay. So that was the uh, one example. And uh, okay. So now let me introduce the work by and uh, Um and during his PhD. This, of course, due to the time constraint, I can only uh, uh, introduce a little bit of his work. So as a background, as we all know, many tunnels are being constructed everywhere in the world, especially in congested cities. And obviously, the tunnel can there are multi-tunnel interactions, like this one, and also like this one. Okay, different type of configuration, and excessive large tunnel settlements being reported, and also large tunnel gradient also reported, excessive, and cracking, and so on. So that was the background of uh, Ohm's research. And so he has carried out three and uh, very detailed uh, series of experiments. And in addition to the model model, later I will uh, say, so for the first series to study the configuration, if this is existing tunnel, and how this new tunnel affects this one. And, what, and the other way is if this tunnel is underneath the new tunnel, then how this new tunnel will affect this existing tunnel. So imagine if you're a designer, okay, which type of configuration would you like to advise your client? Okay, which configuration, this configuration and this configuration. So for the ease of um, your reference data, let me just E means existing. Two means the C over D ratio. So E2 means C over D ratio of two. And N means new. Three is 3.5. Okay, so new tunnel at a C over D ratio of 3.5. This, this is the uh, notation we use in our uh, uh, test. And also Ong also carry out another series of tests to study a pillar depth and also shielding effect. So this is, a, so this is E2, N3. This is a, uh, the distance is 0.5D. So this one is, uh, pillar depth is 2D. D is the diameter of the tunnel, which is in product scale is, two me uh, is six meter diameter of tunnel. So, so compare this case and this case. And then his, he was interested also to look at whether the shielding effect, say this is upper exit tunnel and there may be a, a lower exit tunnel. So how this tunnel being protected, okay, uh, sorry, how this tunnel being protected by this existing tunnel. So there's three tunnel interaction here, okay. So this is uh, E2, 3, N5. Okay, N5 means the last one in terms of C over D ratio is five. And the middle one here is C over D ratio is three. Okay, so, so that's how it's uh, called. And then there's a three series of tests. Last series is to study multiple tunnel. Again, this is an existing tunnel, and there's two tunnels underneath new tunnel ones, so left and right. And this existing tunnel concerns this one first, and then this one. So there's a, a three series of uh, studies, and I'm going to show you quickly about his result. Now we. Also, he developed a very novel new idea how to simulate tunnel construction moving forward by including effects of volume loss and also effects of weight loss. Now, when Cambridge University did a lot of tunneling tests, two-dimensionally uh, collapsed the tunnel by only control volume loss in one go, plain, plain strain or 2D. And we did this 3D. And also, as I, we use this called donut. If you uh, visit UK, uh, some of these uh, colleagues here actually study in uh, Oxford and also in Peel College. They call donut. Well, you, you, I bought the idea called donut. So this ring here, this a uh, in in here. This is a tunnel lining used aluminium, and the outer ring, and uh, with heavy liquid, and also inner ring another heavy liquid, same like, same type. But the outer ring can control volume loss for Ohm's test, for example, control volume loss of two percent. And in the ring, actually, we can train the heavy fluid out to simulate the volume loss of 
no, a weight loss of the tunnel due to excavation of soil. Now you can imagine if the tunnel is big, then the volume loss and uh, the weight loss can be significant. Okay, small tunnel, of course, you can ignore. So we can uh, move, uh, can do this in a very precise manner. So you can uh, on the right hand side you can see we can simulate the tunnel movement one, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, doing pro in this, uh, uh, progressively during the test. Later on, I got another figure to show you. So this is a typical arrangement. This is a plan view, and this is a core section. So now this is the extension tunnel, and then we can simulate exactly in the same way like this: one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can state by state, just like those that happen in the field, and then we can monitor the performance of the tunnel. So in all homes tests, similar diameter is equivalent to six meter in prototype scale, and the and lining thickness is equivalent to um, 0.23 meters in concrete in prototype scale in the transfer direction. Okay, so this is one of the typical arrangements. This is a uh, exit tunnel, and this is a new tunnel above. Okay, and then this is two parallel tunnels, so left and right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five on the right hand side. Everything is computer controlled during the experiment. And this is an, uh, uh, two vertical stack. Uh, tunnels. Okay, you can see here. Anyway, and also we have a lot of instruments put in to measure the settlement of the ground and also settlement of the tunnel. And also inside the tunnel, we put a string gauge, uh, we put a, a potentiometer to measure the distortion of the existing tunnel. And also on this outer surface, we put string gauges to measure bending moment and, and so on. And also along this direction, we also install string cage to measure longitudinal bending of the tunnel. So this is one of the uh, models set up ready to be tested. And in addition, we also carry out uh, three-dimensional finite analysis um, using presses. But the important point is that we use a very advanced uh, hypoplasticity model here. Uh, the, the strength of this model is en enable us to simulate a state dependency uh, stress dependency and also variation of stiffness with uh, strains. Okay, so those, so those are very important aspects of soil behavior. I keep telling my students, soil, like human beings, very clever. Okay, they have a memory. They are path dependent and string dependent material. So we must get the model right. And the, of course, the parameter wise, uh, a little bit more, uh, uh, more than usual. So 8 plus 5, the 13 parameters. Anyway, so on the left hand side, the central test procedure on the right side, the numerical procedure, they are uh, almost identical. So I'm not go to details. Let me go to some results. Now, as I put early on, imagine you are the designer. If you can, if you have a choice to have the left hand side arrangement and right hand side arrangement, which one will you choose? You are the designer. You are the boss for working for the client. Okay. What's the benefit with this? What's the benefit of doing this? So this is the idea. All right. So let me show you the result. Now this is the uh, this one here is the uh, tunnel settlement, existing tunnel settlement measured. Okay, and this red line here is the computed for what? Which case? For this case, E two N three. Okay, meaning the tunnel, the new tunnel is excavated underneath the existing tunnel, and. This is a normalized settlement in terms of percentage, normalized settlement by the tunnel diameter. And this horizontal axis is the measure from the center line of this new tunnel. Okay, so one we imagine, of course, in the cent at the center line, is get the bigger settlement versus the one uh, further away. Uh, maybe let me try to, to be fair. They were sort of use the mouse so that every both screens you can see. Okay, so this is one is the um, E2. N3. Now, for the tunnel settlement, for this case, obviously much bigger, actually, versus the one E3 N2, means the tunnel, new tunnel excavate above the existing tunnel. Actually, this, for this case, actually, the, the existing tunnel heaved. Okay, the one shown in blue here. So, heave up here. Okay. So, on the face where there seems to be, N E2 N3 will be better for the tunnel. And Actually, also there, those uh, cases here show here, and 
are not fabricated. There are some case histories also happened in the field. Okay, I list out here, but in the interest time, I will not go to detail. So in other words, centrifugal results are real. Okay, they are not fabricated. And there actually is case history also report that. So how about Guang settlement? Okay, so the Guang settlement, now E2 and 3 in terms of in terms of tunnel deformation, it induces a lot tunnel uh, settlement. But on the other hand, in terms of ground movements, actually it's less. It's so here. Okay, this is the one uh, from the uh, deeper tunnel, the shallow tunnel one, and young a new tunnel above the same tunnel actually have bigger settlement. Okay, so you can see the cost to pay is if you want to construct new tunnel above the existing tunnel, although the damage to the existing tunnel is less, but you've got to think about the Guangzhou settlement. Which one you would like to see? Okay, which one set, uh, set, uh, suit your Guang condition, suit your client, suit your local condition? So it's not one side win on the, the other side. Okay, so it depends what you need. I think this is a very nice experiment. And in each time, no, those are dotted line ones. Actually, they are all uh, computed ones. Okay, so you can see the computer one and the measure one that they're very consistent. Of course, of course, they're not identical, but the trend is the same. Anyway, uh, and this is a plot. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe in the interest time, I will skip this one. Uh, now let's talk about deformation of the tunnel. Now for the, this is. Those are the measured, the de now measured and also computed, deformed the shape of the existing tunnel. When the tunnel was excavated above the new tunnel, then actually because of vertical stress release, then the deformed shape becomes something like this, it leaps in this direction, okay? But if the tunnel, new tunnel is underneath the existing tunnel, uh, the stress relief is only mainly below the existing tunnel. And the vertical stress doesn't change much. That's why it becomes a shape like this. Okay, so you can see there are two two ellipses, but depends on how you arrange your a new tunnel construction. So this we saw again consistent with numerical modeling. So it's very interesting uh, to help engineers to decide what we want to do. Okay, uh, for your tunnels. So let me move on the second series of uh, Ohm's test. This time really want to investigate and. Um, the pillar depth, pillar depth defined as the distance between the existing tunnel and the new tunnel. So we have seen the result from this tunnel, at uh, this case, then now we will move away our new tunnel to a, 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 a bit further. And also this, we want to see how this, uh, there's another existing tunnel or new, uh, how this tunnel can be regarded as protective measure to the existing tunnel above. Now, nowadays in Hong Kong, actually we use canopy. Actually, we install some um, a reinforcement here to protect the, this tunnel if there's a tunnel new tunnel underneath. So this is one of the practical application. Okay, so what happens if we increase from the uh, P, P, P dot F, P divided by D, D 0.5 to this case equal to 2.0. 2 so the benefits of doing that is this one, the, this is the and the uh, first test here, once we have done the increased pillar depth, then the, you can see the surface, uh, the tunnel settlement reduced substantially, okay? Now meet the criteria of LTA. That's a, a land tran a transport authority in Singapore. So meet the criteria of a Singapore, Singaporeans and uh, guidelines, a 15 mm settlement of the existing tunnel. But before that, you can see here, that it's a, above this LTA, but still meet the criteria of buildings department, the Hong Kong criteria, uh, 20 mm, uh, for the influence of the new tunnel after the existing tunnel. Again, in the interest of time, I would uh, move uh, fairly quickly. Now, uh, in terms of stress, as you probably all of you know that, uh, very often the government, uh, the local authority, would like to limit the stress induced on the existing tunnel due to the new tunnel. So the limit, for example, uh, here is a, a building uh, department in Hong Kong limited plus or minus 20 kPa, which is very stringent requirement. So mo for most cases, cannot meet the criteria. So and only for this case here, getting close, means you have a canopy, 
in the middle or pi, uh, external or something, a structural element to help to strengthen this, this uh, exit tunnel, then you can get the, uh, the stress distribution slightly close to the limit here, okay, due to the vertical stress release. So this is another practical application. One can think about how to minimize the stress relief underneath the exit tunnel and uh, to reduce the stress induced to the exit tunnel one. And again, in the interest of time, I have, no, I have to move quickly. And uh, now looking at this side by side. So we have two tunnels, left and right, arranged like this, or stack, vertically stacked tunnel, one above the other. Again, uh, Ohm has done excellent tests. Uh, on the left-hand side is side by side. On the right-hand side is the stack of the, uh, arrangement. Again, it's showing the tunnel settlement. OK, a vertical is a normal ten, normalized tunnel settlement, horizontal distance, normalized horizontal distance from the, from the uh, first tunnel. So you can see the results are fairly similar. But after the first tunnel, there's substantial increase of the settlement due to the second uh, tunnel. And same thing for the stacker tunnel, the same. OK, but if one compare the ultimate, then this arrangement gives you more tunnel settlement versus this configuration. OK, so about 10 percent. So that's another uh, information you would like to consider if you do have a choice, OK, which way you want to construct your tunnels. OK, I will not go to that detail. Again, this is the uh, induced strains along the inwards of the existing tunnel. Um, very similar uh, magnitude, but this is uh, due to because the side by side is shift to your right hand side. And this, of, of course, this is always in the middle. But again, for, for these two cases, um, for the stacker one, I will just have a, about 10% reduction in the induced and uh, strain at the bottom of the existing tunnel lining. OK, so uh, again, um, in the interest of time, I have to move. Otherwise, our, our president will kill me. Um, so let me move on to uh, green slope engineering. And this is a work done by uh, Vivian. And He's, he has done a lot of work during his PhD, but in the intro, I can only concentrate the effect on, on the uh, wood architecture. So this is Vivian, and he's sitting here, and I believe he's looking for jobs. So if you have an offer, you can give to him. <laughs> Vivian, and you would like to stand up so, so that people know you. And uh, Yes, thank you. <laughs> he's a bright young man, and... Uh, uh, um, already got a job, so I, I will not introduce, but Vivian is still looking for a job, and uh, please give him an offer if you uh, uh, like his work. Okay, so background of research in Hong Kong is we have about, maybe similar to Thailand here, we have about uh, 2,400 mm rainfall, uh, average rainfall per year. So we have many uh, landslides, and about 300 per year, but more than 95% of them are shallow ones, okay? And about 6,000 still need to be upgraded. And, and 2,500 um, thousand existing slum re uh, require restoration. And Hong Kong government spent about 120 million uh, Hong Kong dollar, uh, I think times four. Then we give you a Thai uh, buck and per year to upgrade 200 slopes every year. And conventionally, use a twin lamb, a spray concrete, or stone column, a stone facing wall to uh, minimize uh, infiltration. Um, so, unfortunately, you can see those are lots of failures and uh, happens. So, this is the, uh, this is the uh, stone wall. You can see failure near the bus stop. Fortunately, at that time, heavy rainfall, no people waiting for the bus. Otherwise, you can imagine people would get killed. And so this is the uh, traditional way to chin them. So basically, spray concrete, weak concrete to, to minimize rainfall. And you can see a lot of failures again. So now the idea is, how can we help to stabilize the shallow failure and also rest, uh, restorate or improve the natural slopes in a green, uh, under the green condition? So the idea is to explore is, can we use plants to stabilize shallow slopes? Shallow means a shallow depth failures. Okay, I don't mean the angle is shallow. I mean the shallow depth failures. Okay, normally say one meter. Okay, and of course for the deep seated failure, we can we can still use soil nails. Okay, but the shallow ones, shallow failure ones, we can 
and use plants. Okay. So the idea is we have we will have a self-regenerative, sustainable means maintenance cost is kept to minimum. Okay. In Hong Kong, in the old days, 20 years or 30 years ago, used an artificial uh, uh, greening system, so-called hydro seeding. It's very expensive to maintain. So now we use natural uh, material. So the idea is uh, plants, like human being, has is life. Okay, uh, care for the synthesis. So we require water. So water will be drained from the soil to do the photosynthesis by. By, by, by sucking water, sucking water from the soil, increase suction, okay? And suction is very helpful to, to stabilize slope for two reasons. One is increased shear strength and also reduce permeability. When the, when the suction is high, the water is difficult to get in, okay? Later on, I will show you uh, with uh, uh, more details. So the idea is how can we make use of that and traditionally, people using soil, and no, also using root as a reinforcement. Of course, you can use it, but I don't think it's the most beneficial to use it because if you want to use root as a mechanical means, why not just put soil nails? <laughs> Easy, right? Much bigger, higher strength. So the real, the real innovation or real idea is to use plants to increase soil shear strength and reduce permeability. So that's the idea. So I discussed with Vivian. So how can we model this in a centrifuge to induce suction okay, in a centrifuge, like plants? So we even uh, developed, I think it spent about a year to develop this a new idea to have a vacuum chamber and to create suction in a centrifuge. And then based on the few uh, observation, tap wood, hard shape, and plate shape, we produce this, or we even produce this artificially root uh, types, three types, okay, and there's a lot of skin laws, so I will skip that, and how can we quantify our sim uh, uh, mod modeling is correct, then we, we use one parameter, so-called root uh, area in, uh, ratio, RAR, so it's the root across any cross-section, okay, normalized by the uh, cross-section area, so this is the uh, so-called RAR definition. So tap wood, this is the one produced by Vivian in the middle brown color, RAR versus depth. Okay, this is all plot in the prototype scale and this is the uh, uh, plate shape. How about the other uh, uh, lines? Those are the lines from field measurements, okay, from different authors. So you can see we, are, we can reasonably reproduce okay, our RAR in a centrifuge compared with those in the field. And those data are all published. If you are interested, you can ask uh, Vivian. He, I'm sure he's more than happy to send you papers. Um, and also measure the interface friction between the artificial roots and also uh, yeah, measure the interface friction and then compare with what happens in the field here. So this is uh, from the shear box test, shear stress versus normal stress. So this is uh, actual test data. So range between, uh, it's about approximately about 30, 40 degree interface friction angle. And those are the reported in the field from 36 to 38 degree. So in other words, we are on the, we are smaller number, but on the conservative side. So now give us uh, confidence, we can simulate that in the centrifuge. So let me show you a first serial test by Vivian to model effect of wood geometry and also wood transpiration. This is important, means suction, okay? So this is the, one of his tests uh, set up, this is a cross section and this elevation view, you can see there's a lot of pipes. As those pipes are uh, introducing suction uh, in, the, in the centrifuge. And, and he ran three tests at the 45 degree uh, slopes, a, a complete decomposed granite, the material used in, uh, this way commonly found in Hong Kong. So this is another view you can see here. Um, uh, those pipes to create suction in the centrifuge while it's spinning. And actually the test was carried out at 15 G. Okay, and also in addition, we carry out transient CPG analysis and in unsaturated soils because the slope obviously at the beginning must be unsaturated. Actually, by the way, it's extremely difficult to saturate natural slope in the, in the field. Why? Because there's always air in the, in the field. Then when rainfall comes, it's very difficult to displace air. Okay, if any one of you do trisal tests in the lab, you know, 
to get a saturated sample is very difficult. You, you say in Hong Kong, we have to induce a flood, a flood the sample with carbon dioxide to displace water, uh, nitrogen, and then apply back pressure in the order of 200 to 300 kPa in order to saturate sample. Then in the field, there's no way you can saturate soil due to natural condition, okay? Um, so most, I would say, over 99% of the slopes, they are unsaturated. Even after, after heavy rainfall, they're still unsaturated, okay? Anyway, so those are the uh, test results. On, let me just concentrate one in the interval of time. Just on the left-hand side, the tab root here. The red one is before rainfall. That's a uh, measured, I use the word measured, the three dots, those are measured in the centrifuge. And the, the dotted line, red dotted line, are the computer simulation. Because so you can see nicely, uh, suction was introduced by Vivian's in invention of a uh, uh, vacuum system. And then after two hours of rainfall, 70 mm per hour rainfall, you can see the blue dots, three blue dots here, measured again. And those are numerical simulation in, in dotted color, uh, in dotted line here, blue dotted line. And then after eight hours of 70 mm rainfall, uh, which is equivalent to about 1,000 year return period. Then, the, then uh, this, the suction is all destroyed in the centrifuge, the green line here, and this is hydrostatic line here uh, produced by the uh, transient temperature analysis. So you have seen the tap, tap root, okay? Tap root is here, and the heart shape, and then plate shape. So in the interest of time, we will not go to detail. And also we carry out a slope stability analysis based on the century test and with uh, those different geometry. And, and again, we carry out stability and analysis based on uncertain soil mechanics. And so let me sh explain to you the result, what happens. Now, Riven, Riven has carried out three century tests, 45 degree. No failure was observed. He was unhappy. So how come there's no failure? <laughs> okay, Be a student also like me, I would like to see failures, okay. And it, it, three tests, no failure was observed. Then let's try to explain theoretically. So those are the slope stability analysis, fetal safety, tap shape, heart shape, and plate shape. So the, uh, the brown color here, the first one is before transpiration. That means before we switch off the vacuum, allow for suction. Okay, so no suction applied. But of course, you still have an original in, in situ suction there. So that's why fetal safety is pretty high. And then when we apply uh, transpiration, means apply further suction, then you can see fetal safety increase for all three cases. And then after eight hours of rainfall, okay, remember this is equivalent to 1,000 year return period. Then still fetal safety is still above one for all three cases. So the numerical simulation is consistent with centrifuge, physical modeling, there's no failure because of the suction. Okay, now, if we ignore suction, okay, assume suction all equal to zero, then the slope should collapse. The purple color here, okay? So now you can see the contrast with and without considering suction, the fetal safety and uh, changed. Now, so let me do a quick uh, uh, summary. So for 45 degree mechanical and hydrology effect can be simulated, uh, you, you have seen that. With Architecture has a strong influence on suction distribution. Hard shape produces highest uh, fetal safety. Okay, so in case, if you are interested in this country, you can select uh, plant type. Okay, hard shape should be the best. Okay. Um, and for the plate shape, unfortunately, it's very shallow one, so I cannot keep suction for too long. And then no failure identified for both physical and numerical models. Okay. And how shape can give you the higher fetal safety, I already said that, so. Now, as I said, we like to see failure. So I asked the viewer and say, why don't you increase the slope angle from 45 to 60? It must fail. <laughs> Let's see what happens, okay? So, so that's, a, that's one of the, uh, his um, tests. I think this is a uh, tape route, I believe. So you can see railings coming, okay, gradually, surface erosion and begin to fail in, the, in a deeper depth. Okay, and the more rain. Remember, 
the rainfall we apply is very, very heavy, 1,000 year return period. Okay, so now take a look over in you know, detail. So, so, so this is tape uh, root. Okay, so now that's uh, before on the left hand side before wing four and after one hour wing four 70 mm per hour. Now 70 mm per hour is our rainstorm warning in Hong Kong. Everybody has to stay home, cannot should not go out. <laughs> okay, and then this two hours wing four you could 10 year and three hour wing four on the right hand side, and then four hour wing four and then five hours and so on and eight hours as I say 1,000 year return period so this is a tape route so you can see that those are deformation mechanisms now so one can take a closer look so that's the deformed shape of the tape root system you can see quite deep after at the end and, uh, and also the run out distance here uh, is a uh, prototype scale um, is uh, uh, about 0.3 meters no sorry model scale now and then we can compare this is a hard shape result. Now for the hard shape, you can see the deformation is much uh, smaller, okay. And also the one-hour distance reduced uh, quite substantially here. Now it's at 287 mm. So you can see the influence of the root shape again, strong influence of the deformation mechanism, okay. And the hard shape again uh, demonstrate to be the best. And the engineer uh, should not just consider for the survival of the plants, but also can consider the, the shape uh, of the roots. So let me move the last one quickly. Um, is recently we, de uh, we developed this uh, new system, environmentally friendly uh, landfill cover system. I, I believe and, uh, in Thailand, you also have landfills to deal with your domestic waste. Okay, so traditionally people uh, use a uh, landfill as well. actually around the world people use landfill um, uh, in many many countries to deal with the domestic waste called MST and closure or final cover normally requires prevent water infiltration minimize gas emission must be stable and also environmentally friendly, environmentally friendly the states okay and traditionally use and uh, compacted clay and on the surface, like Superman, wear the underwear outside, okay? And, and using geomembrane. But the problem is, yeah. Uh, the problem is, many of you in the, in the audience may be experts know that desiccation crash, poor uh, durability, and as it has been reported by uh, All Right in 2006, okay, even compared to clay, due to desiccation, the permeability can increase four order of magnitude. How to tackle this problem? Okay, Superman wear the underwear outside. That's wrong. Underwear should be wear inside. Okay, I explained to you why it should be wear inside. Okay, and theoretically, this is my book on unsaturated soil mechanics, 2007. Basically, use unsaturated soil mechanics, and the traditional way of capillary barrier. Okay, now this is an important diagram. Let me explain. It maybe use one minute. Permeability. So when the land is dry. Then the actual permeability of gravel is less than permeability of silt. So that's, that's the, the fundamental principle using capillary barrier is to, in this region. Okay, when the lens, uh, when the field is dry, relatively dry, then gravel is less permeable. So put the gravel on the bottom, and this is a silt on top. Let's say, then water will not get in. Okay, but in Bangkok or in Hong Kong, we have a lot of rain. So you can see in this region here. On the left-hand side here, humid region, actually gravel has a higher permeability as we know when, the, when it is saturated. So the water will get through, okay? That's a problem for in the, in the so humid area like Hong Kong and Bangkok. So what, what should be done? The idea is very simple, okay? It's adding one more layer. This is the underwear of a Superman, clay at the bottom, okay? Third layer at the bottom. So by adding this layer, okay, then when the when the when the ground is very wet, then clay will prevent the water to get in. Okay, so this is a very important diagram. Okay, so that's why we call all weathered, whether in dry country like Africa or in some parts of North, uh, America or in Asia, relatively wet. 
So this is three-layer system uh, we propose. Actually, uh, we uh, carry out a lot of experiment and numerical simulation to prove that. So we will introduce of this layer, okay? Then, as I said, Superman should wear underwear inside. Then the benefit of that, the benefit of this is no membranes required, okay? We already experimentally proved and also and numerically simulated. No membrane, all three layers, all soils. This idea, no need any membrane. So that means we will not have interface failure. Okay, how, and all, because of this clay layer at the bottom, also, if again, based on uncertain soil mechanics, this clay layer at the bottom protected by the upper two layer, so can prevent desiccation cracks. And this layer can also effectively reduce uh, the gas emission or break through pressure. This, is the, this schematic diagram by actually experimental results also prove that. Require big pressure to break through the gas, the length of gas require 50 kPa. Normally, length of gas only 5 kPa, so it should not be a problem. I'll show you in a minute. Okay? So again, no membranes required. So the idea is our experiment, we are physical modeling 1D, 2D, and the numerical simulation, and a few trial. So this is the column test we performed in nature time. So this is three soil layers, okay, and wing four ponding test. Okay, and also numerical simulations. And just show you one result here. So this is the water content versus depth. And initial water content, uh, this is a silt, gravel, and clay. So this initial water content, and let's concentrate on blue line here. This is after uh, eight hours of ponding, you could do 500 year of with, with, uh, rainfall return period. So you can see in the clay layer still very dry, uh, no change of water content. That means water don't get in. So this layer, of course this layer we can have water because water break through to the gravel layer, but the clay layer still remain almost constant in terms of water content. Now even for the over 1,000 year return period, you can see here, still in the clay layer pretty dry. So it means the water will not get in. This is experimental result. This is not numerical simulation, okay, real test data. And then you can see the compare between the measure and the computer. This is a uh, hydraulic head means pore pressure. Okay, again, they are very consistent results. So in the interest time, we skip. And then we also carry out a 2D film test, ring four at the top. This is a big one, three, three meter by one meter by three meter in that direction, those three layers you can see. Okay, and again, let's concentrate only one result here, just in the middle. So even at the end here, you can see the lower, uh, in the clear layer, the water content remain almost unchanged. Okay, and same thing for here. And this is the pole pressure. Okay, and then uh, with the computer result, and this is the water content. Again, the experimental results are fairly consistent with the uh, theoretical uh, predictions. And how about gas? We also carry out gas tests. Okay, this is one of the, our 1D model. Again, compared with theoretical calculation later, now you can see the flow rate versus gas pressure. So for degree of saturation 60, 80, 100, if it's 100% 100 saturated, I mean the clay, then actually the, uh, gas cannot break through. If 80%, then break through pressure will be in the order of uh, 38 kPa and 22 for degree of saturation 60. So in other words, for normal gas pressure underneath length is about 5 kPa, so this will, gas will not break through. Okay, and this is, now, uh, gas emission rates, okay. Again, meet the Australian requirement if the thickness is, uh, the degree of saturation is uh, uh, 80%, if it's 40%, then you, you may exceed that, then what you need to do is just increase the thickness to 0.6, that will do. Okay, so the conclusion is make use of unsettled soil mechanics. Okay, only natural soil, uh, material use. No membrane, the important thing, no membrane is required. So that means no interface failure or leakage. It can be used for all weather conditions, prevent water infiltration, gas emission, and breakthrough under working conditions. And co actually what we are doing now is instead of using uh, natural material, we use artificial material from, this, from construction waste as a cover. So in other words, construction waste back to waste dump. So it's a very environmentally friendly solution. Use for uh, vegetation, reliable, 
and robust and also environmentally friendly. And so actually this, this uh, invention got the US patent and also got the Chinese uh, discovery patents. And there's a list of papers. Since you are my friends, you can use this free layer. No, free, no charge is required. Okay, I will not uh, sue you. Don't worry. You can just use it. Okay, as many as you like. Okay, and also I provide you free consultancy. Or, or we even can do the free consultancy. <laughs> or, or um. Okay, ah, by the way, if you want to come to Hong Kong and this, uh, we are organized the seven internet conference in August uh, 2018 and in Hong Kong uh, for the Ancestral Conference. And please come to uh, join the conference if you are uh, interested or you feel time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. ลำดับต่อไปนะคะขอเรียนเชิญรองศาสตราจารย์ดรสุทธิศักดิ์สรลำนะคะเป็นผู้มอบของทีละลึกคุณอาจารย์สุทธิศักดิ์นะคะแล้วก็โปรเฟสเตอร์ชาอินค่ะเราจะกลับมาพบกันที่นี่เวลา13นาฬิกา15นาทีนะคะเรียนเชิญทุกท่านรับประทานอาหารกลางวันได้เลยค่ะขอบคุณค่ะ